Welcome to another presentation on the GPX 5000. Now in this presentation we're going to be using the GPX 5000 in fine gold timings and Gordon is going to show us how the discrimination feature of the GPX 5000 works in, with real life examples. Over to Gordon in the UK. I'm out on one of my better Roman fields. I'm going to try out the GPX 5000 and use it in fine gold timings. I'm going to really, the whole idea of this little video is to show you how good it is at discriminating iron and how good it is at actually being able to identify good Roman coins um, at good depths. Okay, so um, this particular site has thrown up lots and lots of Roman coins. I'm using a little handheld um, video recorder which will be attached to my head. And um, as you can see, it's very, very cold today. Um, the lakes behind me are actually frozen solid. We're in late November, and this is a really bad cold snap that we're having, which is quite unusual for this time of year. Anyway, I'm going to start detecting. I'll talk as I'm detecting. Uh, you won't see me in front of the camera, but um, you'll be able to see and hear the finds that I get. Oh, that's a lot better. Eight ground bounce. Okay, as you can hear, the the iron's easy to discriminate. It, it nulls. Okay, I've got a discrimination level of five at the moment, uh, which is about right on this field. Still quite aggressive. easily hear the iron signals, the way they null. It takes a little bit of experience. Now on this type of Roman site I find that the best uh, timings to use are either enhanced or if you're lucky enough to have the GPX 5000, the fine gold. Um, these are timings that usually uh, well, have been designed to work in the gold fields in some of the worst conditions. And on our worst Roman sites are so highly mineralized that uh, this timing is ideal for this type of detecting. Okay, there's a hot area coming up soon. Uh, we'll move actually on to what was probably a Roman pit or something, because you can pretty much suss all these all these iron signals are easy to suss out. Now that might be a positive signal, but there is a lot of iron just here. And sometimes you, what you get is where the iron signal is there, it will throw off what sounds like a positive, coin, positive signal just to the right of it. Well, I'm going to have a little look at that, boot scrape it away a bit. If it is a good signal, it's not very deep. And it's moved, so there's a good chance this could be something, actually. Could 
pushed it onto the iron signal. I'm not convinced. It's small. Whatever this is, is very small. Let's have a look. Could be a small flake of iron. <laughs> and it is a small shot. Okay, there it is. It's a, uh, say, uh, probably a number one, I suppose. Okay, now this one is definitely, it's definitely not iron. I said there's no nulling whatsoever there. Again, it's not very deep. This could be another. Another piece of lead, another shot. But it does sound a bit coin like, so it'll be an interesting one to see. Alright, let's pinpoint this now. Now, the easiest way to pinpoint is to move across the target. And then when the target drops off, it'll be behind the coil. Come back the other way. And it'll be in front of the coil. Now, one of those was there, and one said it was there. So it's going to be in between those two points, and it's going to be down a few inches. Um, I'll explain later on the next signal how I know that. It should be, should be in that lot there. Right, so we've got the target out of the hole. We move the sensitive edge. Okay, so I know it's just about there. Let's see what it is. We're uh, a little ways off where the... Oh, there it is. So it's a button. I was about to say, we're a bit off of where the Roman stuff comes from. And sure enough, it's not a Roman coin, it's a button. That was down probably about three or four inches. So not not bustingly deep. So there you go. The first button. Have a nice signal. Oh, that looks round. I think we've got our first Roman coin. Yeah, yeah, that's a Roman coin. see anything on it but uh, first blood nice Roman coin
have a look at this one. It's down probably about three or four inches from the signal. And it's uh, definitely positive. Sometimes on some of these you don't really know if it's going to be positive until you get it out of the hole. But that one's definite. Okay, there, there we go. There's a coin sticking out this side of this lump. Just there. That's another quite large Roman coin. Or large for here, anyway. There you go, let's get it into the light. Uh, it's got two figures on, on that side. And then the head is on that side. It's not a bad Roman coin. Okay, so that's number two. Okay, it's a bit of an iffy one. But, uh, as we're moving into the really good area, we've got to have a. Even if we don't dig it up completely, we need to semi uncover it. And it's disappeared. So if it disappears, it's falling back into the hole. Okay, it's another positive signal. It's actually my first piece of iron that's beat me, and it's a hobnail. Now, I don't know what it is about Roman hobnails, but occasionally they sound like minims. Okay, so there's a round hobnail from a hobnail boot, it's Roman, Roman hobnail boot, and that's the first piece of iron that's actually fooled me today. Okay, so as you can see, it's very, very good at discriminating iron. Occasionally, though, you will dig just the odd piece of iron that gives exactly the same characteristics as a small coin. There you go. Barky iron. More iron. It's down about two inches and it's quite large, whatever it is. And we are now right on the hump where the Roman coins are usually found. I managed to throw it away from the hole. So it should be in that lump. There's the coin. It was actually stuck to that stone. So there it is there. So hopefully it's in reasonable condition. But, uh, well, not too reasonable. But there's the head. I don't know if you can see the head there. And there's the reverse. So 
So that's number four. So it was down about two, maybe three inches. Not very deep. Gave a lovely signal to it. There was no doubts about that one. Um, I'm using the standard uh, double D coil, which I find on a Roman site is probably about the best coil you can use. Uh, I have a 15 by 12, and if I'm going on pasture uh, where there's not quite so much mineralization and the iron's a bit more spaced out, it's probably a slightly better coil to use. But this is the standard coil, it's very good for Roman sites. deep iron. It's just, you can tell that's not, it's not nulling, but you can hear the null just start coming in. Experience tells me that's iron, I'm not going to dig that. It's one of the more tricky iron signals. Now that's deep, and you can tell it's deep because if I if I go over the signal, there it is there until it stops. Okay, that then would suggest it's just there. But if I come back across it, that would suggest it's about there. So we're looking at a difference between that sort of depth so it's probably down about two or three inches and it's probably a small coin like a small minim It's actually falling back in the hole. Oops. An odd signal, this. Tiny little Roman coin. So, there you go, another minim. Okay, we're coming up to the hedge now. Oh, this is a big signal. Okay, this is a biggie. So, uh, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> that could be a big piece of iron. But uh, I've got to have a look, regardless, on this field. It is a very, very good field. Um, there's always been a chance of finding something outstanding. Uh, not what I thought it was. It's a Coke can. So it's a bit of an odd signal to start with. I thought it was surface iron. But I think it's a coin, probably on edge. It's 
definitely sounds slightly strange. Okay, it's definitely a, a good signal, and it was on the surface, probably on edge. Yeah, there it is. That's a nice Roman coin, actually. Must have been laying sort of edgeways on. So it sounded very intense, but very narrow of a signal. And there you go. It's another Roman coin, number six. Should be some detail on that once I melt the ice off of it. See the Roman head there? Yeah, that's pretty good. Probably number nine. It's a screaming signal, so. And sure enough, it is a Roman coin. Okay, so that's number nine. I don't think it's a very good one, but it's a Roman coin. Number nine. The leader marks all the eye. Comes through a beautiful signal. Maybe this is number ten. Beautiful signal. Is it a Roman? In the lump. I think that's number 10. Yes, it is. Coin number 10. Which is what the target I wanted to achieve. Another Roman coin. There you go. So that's it. 10, 10 coins found with the GPX 5000. That's using fine gold timings. Okay, so that's it. I've had enough. I've got cold feet, so I'm back to sit in front of a warm fire. I uh, hope that was uh, informative so you could see how good this machine is at discriminating. I've been on a lot of forums and uh, there's people die hard say that this machine does not discriminate. Well, it does discriminate, as you could clearly see. I've got 10 Roman coins to prove it, that I could find those and not dig. I've probably dug out three pieces of iron. Uh, only one I had to sort of investigate right down to the, uh, the fact that it was a uh, small hobnail from a Roman hobnail boot. Uh, the, other, the other two, once I got them out, I could tell that they were easily going to be iron. I just kicked them back in the hole. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is a great machine, the GPX 5000, and the fine gold timings is a real improvement to the discrimination abilities of these detectors. We look forward to seeing you again as we share with the MindLab global community further insights into the world's best detection technologies. As you've just seen, Gordon really did have the GPX discrimination advantage.